babies. Community board member. Nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Um, yeah, good afternoon to the councillors, um, to the mayor. It's always nice to be in here. Um, before I'd like to begin, I'd just like to state on record that the views expressed in the small speech are purely my own and have no reflection on the Hagley Ferrymead Community Board. So how did we get here? How did, um, how did this, this plan come to be? I think we can all agree that the fundamental driver behind this is a, is a reaction to a crisis. In the past five years, they've put an enormous strain on this public institution, on elected members, on services, and I've heard comparisons of this, this council being compared to a war cabinet, and I can understand why. We, we're living in extraordinary times. And in order to meet the council's obligations of services which rely on capital, enormous decisions need to be made. I do not believe that the proposed approach to address the $1.2 billion shortfall is the pragmatic solution that it's presented to be because it is rooted in ideology. The neoliberal agenda that emerged in the 1980s and the globalised market economy that we live under today. The fourth Labour government began the mass privatisation of the state and many local authorities followed suit. But as we know, remarkably, our city, the Christchurch City Council, held off from the fire sale adapted to the times, and it's why all of us here, all of our citizens, own a share in successful revenue-generating assets today that bring in $46 million per year. The proposed long-term plan is a continuation of the neoliberal experiment in the belief that the market is the answer to all questions posed by economic difficulties. But this is more than an experiment on the trajectory of economic growth. This is an experiment on the future of our city. So selling $750 million worth of assets is a short-term solution to plugging the hole. But where do the future costs lie? The ratepayer will carry the burden. So I watched Campbell live yesterday, and um, I was pleasantly surprised to see Rath speaking on there, sounding more like a politician than a banker. And you're absolutely correct in saying, <laughs> Rath, that people want their roads fixed. You know, they want houses made available. They want security before the erection of a half billion dollar stadium. To me, the solution quite clearly lies in the relationship between us, the CCC and the government. The council needs to stand up to the government and say the pressure that you're putting us under is unacceptable in a time of crisis. We need support, we need time, we need flexibility to sort ourselves and our books out and to provide for our people in the way that we see fit. The current authoritarian manner of Sarah and EQC are harming the fabric of the city and are causing us to have to find radical solution with no thought for the future. And as a young person, I urge you to be the council that, that will be remembered for standing up to the government and demanding a complete renegotiation of the anchor projects to be built. That's where we can find the capital and that's when we can regain sovereignty of our city. Thank you. Thank you. We've got time for questions. Ellie. I'm really interested in you saying, Joe, you talk about um, the financial strategy rooted in ideology. And of course I've heard that. And there are two sides to this, and those are clear as well. What I hear, though, sometimes, I guess, from the other side, if you want to call it that, is also rooted in ideology. How do you differentiate between... I mean, you can't have your cake and eat it. Mm. Um, well... I mean, we, the ideology that's presented is, is clearly following one strain of ideology. I mean, we're not coming along from maybe a left-wing perspective and talking about, like, nationalising, you know, more assets to bring in more revenue. Like, it is, it is a, an ideology that is based on the belief in the market and the fact that we need to free up some capital um, and the market can deal with these assets in the same way, if not produce more profit that than it can under the public model owned by the council. But Joe, we've had an earthquake, and a mm. massive earthquake. Mm. And so, I mean, I'd love to hear this question answered. H how do you pay your fair share? You know, and what is the fair share for the council versus central government? And uh, look, I don't want to hear an argument about, you know, the fact that the blueprint wasn't consulted, et cetera, et cetera. Let's just pretend that um, we didn't have the blueprint and the anchor projects weren't there, 
Yeah. There are certain things that we need to build as a city, so how do we pay for it? Um, uh, one solution could be you could stagger rates um, for properties worth over a million dollars. You could raise rates by 100% on those properties. That would uh, yeah, bring in quite a, a fair amount of revenue because effectively rates act as a wealth tax. It's a flat tax. No, no, um, no, no, no. Somebody in a, in a very expensive property I mean, we had a guy before who's already paying fourteen thousand yeah. dollars a year. That's way more than I pay, and 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 he increases um, he increases to seventeen thousand under our proposed rate increases. It's a wealth tax, it's not a flat tax. Yeah. No, no, zero point five percent on a million dollars is X amount more than zero point five percent on four hundred thousand dollars. So of course, if you have a, a more if you have a, a larger uh, property and it costs more, there's going to be cost more in rates, but it's still a flat tax of 0.5%. No, 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 no. Because it's the percentage, it's actually the, the opposite of a flat tax. The, the component in Christchurch rating system of the Uniform Annual General Charge, is, which is the flat changed. tax, is a tiny, tiny amount of the total rate. Yeah, it's the total approximately rate. 0.5%. The total rate is based on the value of the property. Yeah. It's like as if you uh, went into a, a petrol station and bought your petrol based on the value of your car, which we don't do. Um, but that's actually the rating system yeah. that operates in New Zealand. But, yeah, but le sure leaving that aside, that, yeah. I mean, that, I, that, that probably, in terms of million dollar properties, that probably wouldn't bring in enough to pay for the shortfall. So, and and I'm I'm recognising the fact that there are components of the shortfall that are part of a blueprint that the community didn't feel that they had a say in. So, yeah. so uh, but what I'm trying to say is, is what is what, how do we pay? I mean, we have had an earthquake. Yeah. We've got a lot of rebuilding to do. Yeah. Um, how do we pay our way if we don't look to some of our releasing some capital from our asset base? Yeah, well, the, the BRICS Development Bank has just been set up, I think, uh, a month and a half ago which has been set up by the, the BRICS nations, which are Brazil, India, Russia, China, South Africa, and they're, they're putting 100 billion capital up for development projects um, throughout the world and, you know, a diplomatic mission to, to, to meet with certain parties within this bank as a solution, because although we could... Uh, you, the argument against... My argument is borrowing more is never good, I, there has been an earthquake. We live in exceptional times. We need capital. We can either borrow more, we can either ask the government for more flexibility, a bit more help, um, other sources for capital, or we can sell assets. So, yeah. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it is great seeing young people coming along and making submissions um, on the LTP. We're very yeah, pleased about you, yeah. that. That's, it's really great to see you all here as well. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, Robert Alexander.